Hey, what's up? I'm Jeff. And I'm Chuck from the band Simple Plan. And you are with the Gig Goer. Played some really really tiny shows where you had like almost like a pole right in front of the the stage and it was just like crowd surfing pits everywhere it was just really neat and then we played those you know larger venues larger festivals as well and that's what's cool about the UK people love music and um, and people are pretty open minded I think you know like a download festival where you have like bands from you know a lot of different genres yet people just you know go to see them and and, and don't necessarily make you know the difference really. Um, so it's all about, yeah, it's a, it's a place where people actually still go to the shows a lot. You know, we have a, like, like a pretty long career now, it's been for all, all, over 15 years. So we've sort of done the highlights of the sort of UK music scene we have a chance to be a part of. You know, we did the whole... Yes, we did at the Astoria. Yeah, was back in the day, the Astoria yeah. shows were awesome. We opened up for Bowling for Soup. That was one of our first UK tour we ever done. That was amazing. It was our first sort of taste of the audiences here and it was awesome. And we opened up for Avril here and played the big, the big arena. So that was really special. Wembley, which was unbelievable, like the whole Reading and Leeds thing. I think we've been really lucky just to be a part of all these different legendary vibes, you know, of the UK. I do have to say that the UK is the only place in the world where I had to sign someone's band hood. Uh, that was pretty, uh, I stayed pretty far, held my pen from really, really <clears> far, and I signed it. Uh, the guy, because he was That's really courageous. Place, that was pretty, that was one of the crazy ones. Did you guys threw a, a TV out of, of a hotel or backstage? Actually, we threw a, a fridge. fridge. Sorry, yeah. So that was the cliche rock star. I, I don't know. I thing. felt that I had to do it once in my career, except that I did it when I could not afford the fridge. So it was pretty expensive, especially paid in pounds. We played the Playboy Mansion. Oh. And we uh, and after we performed, we all jump in the grotto, where there was naked girls everywhere. Do you want to keep on going on the, on the subject, or? A few more things happened. <laughs> it was. Uh, what was yeah. that? <laughs> that was a long time ago, 2004 or five. That was a nice rock star moment. The Playboy, Playboy Mansion. Mansion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you know what? We've been lucky. We had a lot of of really special moments. I think for us, like, at least for me, it's always playing in like these crazy exotic places that we've, you know, that most bands maybe don't go to play. Like we've played in, in, in Dubai, we played in Tel Aviv, South Africa, we did a tour with the Metallica there. And it was unbelievable to be a first time in Africa playing shows and doing a safari and being in Cape Town. And this, it was one of the most beautiful trip I think we ever had as a band. All these things together, like doing huge TV shows back in the, in America, Jay Leno show and like Colin O'Brien doing New Year's Eve on, in Times Square. I think we've been very lucky that we've had a lot of these sort of special moments where you kind of pinch yourself and you go like, wow, man, this is amazing. But I think one we always go back to, I think we all agree on, is the first time we play our hometown arena, the Bell Center in Montreal. Sold out, like we sold every single seat in that arena. And we had all our parents and our friends there. It was sort of the first time that they were able to witness how well the band was doing. and. They got to see the concert, they got to see the reaction, and I think that was uh, definitely, I'll remember that for the rest of my life. I think it was a very challenging record to make because we were following quite a bit of success with uh, Summer Paradise, and we felt that suddenly it was opening a lot of doors for us to try different genres, different styles. I think the biggest challenge was probably to pick within those songs what would make a cohesive collection of songs to make a record. If anything, we went back to the studio twice to actually, I think, rebalance You know what we had done. Uh, we probably took one direction and we felt that it wasn't necessarily representative of where we wanted this band to be in 2016. So we went back and actually recorded more rock songs to kind of balance, even it out. I think it's a very diverse record. It's a record that goes in a lot of territories that we haven't necessarily um, touched before, but at the same time, it throws back to what we did throughout our career, to the identity of Simple Plan, to what we're known for. It was, it was a tough record to make. Truthfully, even like with the producer, we felt that perhaps we had a stronger vision about what this band was all about than he even did. He's an amazing producer, you know, Howard Benson is a legendary producer, but I think this band has such a strong identity that when you start stretching it too much, there's something that gets lost. I think we're 
after a year, like it, the, the record accomplished what we wanted to accomplish with. And the fans love it, and we love it, and we're proud of it, and yeah, we stand behind it. I think there's one thing that bands take for granted, and it's how important to meet every single fan of yours and, and, and treat them like amazingly well, you know? They're the reasons you're gonna build with them. Be a good person. Just, just remember where you're coming from and remember that your fans are really there for you. They're the reason why you're playing and you have to treat them properly. Wow. Let's say boom. Not, Not one of our, one of our songs. God. I don't listen to any other bands but some of mine. That's just weird. I think it's a tie between Jeff and uh, David. I've read somewhere that it's um, it's a sign of a lot of, of very big intelligence to spread your stuff and, and, and be disorganized. My chaos is very structured. People just don't understand it. We're five guys in the band. We have one you know dressing room and or one boss. He just likes to take. I mean, he, normally, he should take about twenty percent. He likes to take maybe eighty percent of the space. That's the only thing. I think I would probably more, be more secure meeting an alien here than being surrounded by aliens. That's me. We've been to a lot of places and <laughs> space is not one of them, so they could be really rad. I don't, I don't think we have the technology to go to space right now. I mean, we go, but not really fast.